are eight. What's up? As you may have guessed, we're off to yet another adventure. Due to the fact that the coronavirus really f***ed everything up in Hong Kong, the show was cancelled. Therefore, we're off to buy ourselves out of a show that never happened. Yeah, I want to be so on the show. You want to be on the show? Come on. What's your name? Bernard. Bernard. Say hello to Bernard, people. Yeah. What you doing, Bernard? You just stand here. You're standing here. You stand here being cool like you are, right? Yes. All right. Thank See you later, you. Bernard. Anyway, as I was saying, coronavirus f***ed everything up in Hong Kong. Show got canceled, so we're going elsewhere to buy ourselves out of a show that never actually happened. So this time, the whole crew isn't going. I'm sorry, I just started hearing really loud circus music in my head. What did you say? It's just me and Arthur. Ryan the Lion is flying from Hong Kong to meet us in Dubai. And then maybe we'll possibly go on to Qatar together for a day. So I wasn't joking when I said that we're going to buy ourselves out of the show. These Hong Kong trade shows that happen three times a year, you know, they make up a significant part of our wholesale revenue, both for jewelry and watches. And considering the fact the last four Hong Kong shows we went through a Category 5 storm and the riots, and now the coronavirus. Let's just say it affects our bottom line. I told you guys before, when this happens, we hit the pavement. We don't sit around crying about it, we go out and do something about it. Hopefully our trip to the Middle East will bring us some supplemental income to make up for the losses at Hong Kong. Which means, you guys are gonna see a lot of buying this trip. For now, I'm gonna hang out at the lounge for an hour. I'm gonna pick up some duty free first, and then, 12 hour flight to Dubai. You drinking already? Fancy meeting here. Arthur, can I ask you a question? Are you gonna play ball on camera this trip? It's only me and you, man. Because when Ryan the Lion arrives, you know nobody's gonna be talking but him. You don't wanna be on camera. Yeah, but somehow he's already famous. He got, he's got people stopping him on the streets of Hong Kong now. You Ryan the Lion. <laughs> Nobody's stopping me, man. Oh wait, you just wait. You just wait. After your last performance at the Miami vlog? Suck bowl. It's gonna suck bowl. It's gonna suck bowl. You're gonna be famous. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I got a little man. I need some privacy, man. I'll see you in 12 hours. Welcome to Dubai. So when we get to Dubai, sometimes we'll stay in places which are a resort, which is on the water, or we'd like to stay in the center of things. This time around, we're staying at the address. And there are actually two of them that flank the Dubai Mall on each side, both with the view of the Burj Khalifa and easy access to Dubai Mall which we'll be visiting tomorrow, because tomorrow will be a day off. This is actually the one, if you remember a couple years back, that was on fire. So hopefully, there'll be no fire this time. I'm gonna go check in for now. So, amenities in Dubai is never, never disappoint. It is indeed one of the most luxurious destinations in the world. I feel lucky to be in the type of business where it takes me to places such as this. While working, I still get to enjoy the luxuries of life. Room isn't bad, check it out. afternoon Dubai time. Yes. We slept 12 hours on a dot. Yes. No complaint. How, how you feeling? Good. Good. Thursday, Fridays, the weekend here in Dubai. So therefore, we're gonna go into lunch slash breakfast slash I don't know what this is gonna be with Mustafa again. And we shall be in a food coma over the next two hours. Yes. Because lunch doesn't go over lately look, here. Look on the bright side. What's the, what's the bright side? So we're gonna have like 10 hours to walk around Dubai Mall, walk off the food. 10 hours you want to walk around Dubai Mall. I, I don't have that kind of stamina in me though. <laughs> so let me get that door for you, sir. Let me get that door for you. It's happening right now. We couldn't have a trip to Dubai in Amman without a ride in the line. Absolutely. Director Polanski. <laughs>
<laughs> What's a purple Lansky? Can you explain to me? It's purple Lansky. Roman Polanski. Roman Polanski. Ah. Go to the... Even though it's 2 a.m. our time, it's breakfast time here in Dubai. Wait till we get a load of the food we get for breakfast. Mustafa, what we say? First you eat, and then you die. <laughs> this is called mazguf. It's cooked on a fire for two hours. This fish only swims in the Iraqi the river. They bring it here. It's ridiculous. He orders for 25 people, but there's only eight of us here. After having shish kebabs for breakfast, where do we go? And the same place, smoke shisha. Again. As I said, Thursday and Friday are days off, so lunch, smoke shisha, and maybe me and Arthur will make it to Dubai Mall. See what's going there. For now, we're gonna go kill our lungs for a little bit. Good looking mall, right there. After a healthy lunch, well, maybe not so healthy lunch, we're off to? Do you buy more? Are we going to need to buy an extra suitcase? Yes, for, for Jerry in the Balmain store. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dubai Mall is 12,300,000 square feet. Got an indoor pool, outdoor pool, bowling alley, airstrip, aquarium, ice skating ring, every goddamn thing in here. What else they get? Balmain. Oh yeah, Balmain. <laughs> There's a story about Balmain. Our partner Gary loves Balmain, so he specifically gave us instructions on a day off to go to Balmain and buy him a suitcase worth of shit, because apparently they have great sales here. How much off? 90%, like, uh, but I think they should fake if you ask me. <laughs> I think so too, at 90% off. So we're finished at Balmain. End result? Arthur. You do not think this will be too much? <laughs> we bought some fake shit at the bomb main store. And a suitcase. Suitcase is also fake. Not very really made very well. You don't think it would be too much? No. Arabi, you think it will be too much? And you have space, yeah. <laughs> So when you run out of creativity in the mall, you, you put an aquarium in the middle. Arthur, I would like one of these for my living room. It's gonna cost you a little bit. A little bit, yeah? Arthur, how we do so far at the Dubai Mall? I mean, no complaints so far. I bought an extra suitcase, what do you mean? Uh, yeah, but most of this is like fake. They don't really sell fake here. Ah, okay. <laughs> so Dubai Mall is great and all, and so is the food coma for lunch. But I uh, kind of had a free day today because it's the weekend here on Friday. I'm getting antsy. So we're going to go grab dinner with Ryan the Lion, and tomorrow we get to work. Get antsy. All right, well, where are we going to eat? The king of the kebabs. Let's go. Yep. So where are we, first of all? Ravi, where you bring us, Ravi? What is this place? Oh, that special. Since 1978. How do you feel about Ryan's choice? <laughs> we asked Ryan to take us to a fancy place. He, he, he mistook it for authentic. This is very authentic, Ryan. When they don't give Ready to do some work? Absolutely. Enough of this day off shit. Get some work done. Ryan, don't act like you've never been on camera before. Copy watch, here we go. Copy watch. You're all over. Welcome to the gold soup. Stop number one, great success. Like a batik. It's like a what? Batik. <laughs> like a boutique, you mean? Yeah. Like a batik. Batik. Okay. Go to Selepatra. And in English? Selepatra. <laughs> it's Cleopatra. <laughs> so far, so good. Look at some diamonds the size of my head for gazillions of dollars.
Tell me a story. Uh, fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, that's one of my favorites. Oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> So a quick update for you guys. Uh, it's been two days in Dubai. As I said, I was starting to get a little antsy. I wanted to get started doing some business. So Saturday came around, which is the start of the work week here in Dubai. And off we went. And of course, the first thing we hit was the gold soup. And that's where uh, things got interesting. Right off the bat, I managed to pick up 22 or 24 Rolexes. Rolexes are always great. Because you get in and out very, very quickly out of Rolexes. They don't stick around. Sort of a way to pay for our trip and then some. Zenith came out with this crystal, let's just say semi-crystal watch, which is like 100,000 millimeters. One of my dealers had that watch. I compared it to my RM32, which is what I'm wearing now. This thing failed to compare in size to that sucker. Looked at some more Bulgari Ultra things, which I've never seen. Uh, they were made for the Middle Eastern market and they have. They look pretty cool, especially the titanium with the blue dial. Love that watch. Try to buy a couple of more Schumachers, but the price was a little bit out of reach, but I'm going back there today, you never know. Maybe I will pick up a couple more. I did pick up a titanium Schumacher right before I left. I have one in the office, but I don't mind having as many as those as possible because they're pretty rare to come by, and there was a rose gold one here as well. I looked at Ulysses Nardine Royal Blue Turbion Mini Repeater, and what was special about that watch is they made that watch much thicker and bigger. Also looked at a unique Alexander the Great Mini Repeater Turbion as well as a Genghis Khan Mini Repeater Turbion. I stopped by another shop that uh, specializes in heavy duty diamonds. And by heavy duty diamonds, I'm talking about diamonds the size of a quarter. Found a very nice Chopard necklace, super unique necklace filled with sapphires. Just love that piece. But I found a yellow diamond, literally the size of a quarter. That was pretty impressive. Picked up an oldie but a goodie Brigade Queen of Naples from the higher jewelry collection. That's the one that's on the brakes that it has the sapphire. Cabochon. Market price on those pieces is about $130,000 to $140,000. And again, you don't see them very often. Not a whole lot of people out there dropping almost $300,000, which is the retail on that watch for that type of Ruby Gay. Hence, there's only a few of them out there. Did a lot of richer meal shopping. Some of the stuff I actually pre sold on the spot. I have a few clients that were looking for specific richer meals, high end richer meals. And I'm now working on a very special richer meal, and that is the Crystal Turbion. And you wouldn't believe where the market is on this watch. It's over $2 million. Uh, working on picking up a QE2 or maybe even two. And remember the market price of them in that low 50s. Trying to pick two up. I found one with box of papers. And, and one, unfortunately, with just papers. A lot of clients here in Dubai tend to throw out their box of papers or not care to hold on to them and not want to give up the papers because they may have their name on it. Some of the people in this market have so much money. Not just here, a lot of markets that they treat box and papers as if it's a candy wrapper. They just unwrap the watch, put it on the wrist, and they throw the rest out. They don't really care how much that re hurts the sale value. That sucks, but I'm hoping to leave here with at least one of them. Oh, a couple of rare Daytonas. The blue and red Daytona with the stone dials where the begins go sideways. Those things trade at around $115,000 to $120,000. Not something I would stock. It's, uh, it takes a special collector to buy one of those. But I do have a client that actually asked me for that watch, so I just sent off some pictures and hopefully one of those deals will go through as well. I won't stock that watch. There's not enough profit margin because they trade so tight because they're so rare. Remember the orange bezel Daytonas? Somebody asked me in one of the Q&As about those orange baguette bezel Daytonas in yellow gold. They thought that it was a special watch made from Mark Wahlberg. It's not. It's something that's actually a regular production. They just make very, very few of them. I happen to see one on a bracelet and on a rubber strap at the same place and then of course ryan the lion decides that we gotta go to a bar we gotta get some drinks we haven't had any alcohol in the last couple of days and blah, blah 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 so we ended up going a club called freeze which is on the bottom uh two pretty cool clubs i was a clubber back in the day and i've seen the best clubs in the world especially when you're talking about places like new york the sound factory etc so these clubs were not as impressive to me but it was nice to kick back after a long day of work today is sunday so we're back to work i know it sounds odd but in dubai sunday is not a day off we usually do this stuff on rounds we'll come around we'll look at a bunch of stuff we'll go back to the same places renegotiate some of the pricing and we have a couple other appointments with people with whom we haven't seen when we get down there, people quickly find out that we're here and everybody starts calling, you gotta come see me, you gotta come see me. And due to the culture here, you cannot go see somebody or have a meal with them. So by the time I leave here, I'm gonna gain about 20 pounds after eating all the kebabs and the lamb and the pita breads and all that stuff. The food here is amazing. I love Middle Eastern food, so for me, it's like an extra five pounds before I get out of here, for sure. But uh, off to work. Arthur's waiting for me downstairs with a cup of coffee and a sandwich I asked him to order me. And uh, let's see what today brings. 
This isn't shady at all. Quick story, I went and took a nap yesterday before dinner. Arthur decides to go downstairs to Dubai Mall because that's what Arthur does, he likes malls. He's standing in a store, five very conspicuous individuals walk in and start eyeing him up and down. Arthur thinking, this is not good. Thinking to try to rob him, my <laughs> suck bowl. It's gonna suck bowl. It's gonna suck bowl. So one of the guy comes up to him, hello, are you Arthur? Nobody's stopping me, man. Is that Arthur? Is Roman here? He's like, yeah, Roman's upstairs sleeping. So basically he was one of my YouTube fans and he didn't really give a shit about you. No. But he didn't want to meet me. Have you at least spoken more than three words to him? Exactly three. What did you say? Hi, how are you? <laughs> That's four. <laughs> Arthur, today is the last day in Dubai before we're off to Oman. We need to kick it in gear. We only bought a dozen or so watches. We need to buy a few more. Otherwise, we're not buying ourselves out of this Hong Kong show that didn't happen. So today, I need you to put on your buying hat. Open up your horizons. We'll have to the gold suit again. Yes. To get you an outfit like like this from pure gold. It's like six kilos of gold. If you buy it, I wear it. Spend a little bit. A bit over a million so good. far. You so did good, you did good. What's the highlight buy? Give me the highlight buy. 15202 is good buy. Rose Camo. The ladies love Rose Gold Off Show is good buy. Yes. Everything was okay buy. Ro obviously, all the Rolexes. What are you doing? A little, a little, because Barcelona lost yesterday and know. you drank too much. Yesterday, no, very upset. And just like that, three days flew by. A bit of a blur, gotta be honest with you here, because everything was very, very fast paced, I guess as you can say, because we had a limited amount of time and more appointments that we could really handle. It's uh, 12 o'clock at night right now, Dubai time. And I got back to the room at 11.15. Managed to pack my suitcase, get an early flight tomorrow morning. Gotta leave the hotel at like 6.30 a.m. So to recap, Dubai, again, this, is, this wasn't one of those uh, trips where we kind of took our time and we normally take the trip prior to the Hong Kong show, which we both know didn't happen due to the coronavirus, unfortunately. And as I said in the beginning of this video, you gotta hit the pavement running. I'm um, so jet lagged and out of it over the last three days and so exhausted and then um, I'm only gonna get about five hours of sleep today anyway So how did I do I did extremely well on pieces that uh, some of our salespeople are even pre-sold It's gonna take some time for these pieces to reach the office by the time we import everything and it'll go through all the paperwork to get the stuff back home But my salespeople are already hard at work selling a lot of the stuff that we already bought the goal was to as I said make up for the profits lost at the Hong Kong show which didn't happen so we had to buy enough stuff that carried enough margin in order to try to somewhat make up for the revenue lost at these shows. Of course, we probably will not, but keep in mind that the expenses are low. You know, it's just me and Arthur out here. We're not paying for any display space. We're not staying in a hotel for 14 days. Four people aren't flying. So, you know, expenses are certainly relatively nothing in comparison to us landing at the Hong Kong show, which cost us roughly 100 grand, right? But overall, I gotta tell you, this was a successful trip. And of all you guys that always ask me what it takes to be in this business and how do I get into this business, at the end of the day, it's hard work. When something goes wrong, you get on the plane, you fly halfway around the world, and you do what you gotta do. I'm not the big bad CEO to sit in a fancy office and uh, tell my people what to do all day long. I'm the guy that's gonna get on the plane, that's gonna go halfway across the world and get it done. And I think so far, I must say that this Dubai trip, we got it done. Pretty tough trip, successful trip. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, it is now 12.43 a.m. I'm gonna be up at 6 a.m. and I'm off to Oman. Arthur, that's your birthday present. <laughs> it doesn't go around enough. <laughs>